My name is Douglas Arnold. I was born on February 20th, 1952. This is a series of autobiographical videos to help my children, my children's children, and future generations understand what it's like to be born in the early 1950s and live into the first part of the 21st century. I'm going to be using a book as a guide to help me provide information for this video production. And I'm going to begin right now by going through that in the introduction. My father's full name was Floyd Thomas Arnold. My mother's maiden name was Marie Violet Ussery, spelled U-S-S-E-R-Y. My parents met in the late 1940s, after World War II. My father worked at a factory known as Jasper Blackburn. My mother also worked there in the bookkeeping department. My father was on the factory floor. He was a setup man who prepared large, heavy uh, mechanical machines for different products that were being produced for the electrical utility industry things like ground rods and electrical connectors. They were married in the late 1940s, I believe 1947, and the website that I'm putting together will have specifics on that. They married uh, at the, uh, at, in the St. Louis area, and at the time, uh, they also were married simultaneously with my mother's brother, Norman Ussery, and his wife Kay. My father earned his living as uh, an industrial setup man. He uh, was not a well-educated man. He never made it past the eighth grade. He was born and reared in the boot heel of Missouri down by Poplar Bluff. His family uh, lived through the depression and were very very poor. They worked crops and odd jobs in the rural areas uh, not far from Poplar Bluff, Missouri. He had a number of brothers and sisters. My grandmother was Bertha Brand and she was married to my grandfather Reuben Arnold. I was born in the early evening of February 20th, 1952. I was born in the hospital that's directly across the highway from the St. Louis Zoo, which I believe was known as St. Mary's at that time and is now known as Deaconess. I was named Floyd Douglas Arnold. The Douglas is random, the Floyd is random. My parents never gave me a real explanation of why those names were selected. I was of average weight. I was told I resembled a monkey. And the reason for that was I was covered head to toe in hair. Uh, my aunt always joked with me, my Aunt Bessie, that I looked so fuzzy and covered that she was convinced I had been uh, captured from the monkey cage at the St. Louis Zoo. My brother's name is Forrest Lee Arnold. I just have one brother. He's two years younger than I am. Today is his birthday. Today is May 6th, 2015. As a boy, my family lived in a variety of locations as uh, the income began to grow for my father and mother. My mother stopped working when I was born, but my father continued at Jasper Blackburn. We lived in a variety of places, including Collinsville, Illinois for a short period, and Maryland Heights, Missouri, also for a short period. In 1957, my parents purchased a home in Overland, Missouri, on Lullaby Lane. I was in kindergarten at the time and attended Iveland School in the Rittner School District. My room was rather small, and I shared it with my brother. 
our neighborhood was special because it was very typical of the uh, expansion in America after World War II. It was a subdivision in the suburbs of St. Louis, about 30 miles west of the immediate downtown area near the Mississippi River. I enjoyed our house very much, but in retrospect, it was a tiny place, but it was a place that my parents called home. 9815 Lullaby Lane in Overland, Missouri. I had a variety of uh, uh, activities around the house during my youth. Uh, certainly school was important, but we uh, only had a television set to keep us entertained. There were no other types of electronic uh, recreation. You played outside, you played inside, and you watched television. A hardship that my family had to overcome was the uncertainty of my father's career. It turned out that he advanced and did quite well in the 1960s, but we had a very modest income and we lived a very typical lower middle class lifestyle. As a student, I began at the Iveland uh, Elementary School in the Rittner District. I actually attended the Remington Elementary School in the park in the uh, Pattonville district uh, a few months before we moved to the Overland house. My parents taught me to value uh, family above all else. We were tight-knit. We uh, did many things with my aunts, uncles, and cousins, and family was vitally important to uh, the happiness and the security and well-being of all of us. What I loved about my father was he was a very down-to-earth man. He was quiet, he was steady, he was sober, and he enjoyed his family most of all. The thing I loved most about my mother is she was uh, gregarious, uh, a little eccentric, uh, very loving, and very devoted to my father and my brother and I. We were very tight-knit. Uh, if you ever have a chance to see one of the famous television programs of the 1960s, Leave it to Beaver, we were very similar to the Cleavers. With the exception, my mother did not wear a dress every day, and my father was not white-collar. We enjoyed a pleasant, happy lifestyle. It was conservative, it was humble, but it was very, very secure. The 1960s, it was a very odd time. We lived in a world which was known as the Cold War. There was um, an omnipresent realization that the United States and the Soviet Union, Russia, were at odds over just about everything you could imagine politically, economically, militarily, in all corners of the world. It made you think about uh, how big and unstable the world could be, but it was only two players at that time. It was Russia and it was America. I, at a very early age, was fascinated with the evening news. Uh, I think it was one of the uh, most intriguing and captivating uh, parts of my day. Right after our dinner meal in the evening around 5.30, I would go to the television set and I'd watch either the CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite or the NBC Evening News with Huntley Brinkley. Chet Huntley and David Brinkley out of Washington and New York. I found the world uh, fascinating and television was truly my window on the world. I was a bit precocious. Uh, I was a bit uh, advanced for my age, particularly in the ability to read and uh, comprehend things like social studies, history, 
Um, I was very good in those subjects. In my spare time, I enjoyed reading, and I enjoyed playing outside with my friends. I spent my summers uh, roaming the streets of Overland on my bike, riding my bike to the local confectionery neighborhood market to buy penny candy and soda and comic books. My parents were pretty liberal at that time in allowing my brother and I to be able to roam freely throughout the neighborhood, much more so than in the late 20th century and 21st century. Kids had a very large uh, area in their neighborhood that they played in, explored. Uh, they were out a lot and we were out every evening until the street lights came on, typically 7.30, 8 o'clock. We played outdoors all day and well into the evening when the weather was fine. I was graduated from Iveland Grammar School in 1964. I went to middle school, which was known as Hake Junior High School, H-O-E-C-H, and was there for four years, 7th, 8th, and ninth grade. We were preparing for our time at senior high school, which was Rittner Senior High School in St. John's, Missouri, a suburb of St. Louis. I had many friends as a, uh, as a child. My uh, closest friends were Frank Waters and Tom Minx and Mike Donahue and John Stubbs. These were all very, very good friends, boys who lived in and around our neighborhood. When I entered junior high school at Hake, I became very good friends with other young men, including Kevin McKibben and Steve Garner. And we became quite a team and are close even to this day. High school was not very challenging for me. I just found it, uh, I found it easy with the exception of mathematics and science which were not easy. Uh, I was a lazy student, and I don't recommend anyone being a lazy student. I managed to have average grades without uh, opening many books. That's unfortunate because if I would have been more attentive, I believe I may have done far better when I entered the university in 1970. My parents did not have much education. My mother uh, was in high school, but she did not graduate. My father did not finish the eighth grade. Uh, they managed to uh, prepare themselves well for adult life, and in the 1950s and 60s, there were ample jobs that provided uh, secure salaries and wages for middle-class people, and we managed to live a very comfortable life, not wealthy, uh, not ostentatious. We didn't have many of the things that others had, but we had a safe, secure, and uh, comfortable life. Never went without food, always had nice clothing, even took a vacation once a year. After I completed high school in 1970, uh, several of my friends and I attended the University of Missouri in St. Louis. It was a commuter campus in Normandy, Missouri. It was relatively new. It had only been a few years since it had been a golf course that had been converted into uh, a growing university. I wasn't prepared for college as I should have been. Uh, I was the first in my family to attend college and subsequently each day was an exploration was something new, was something that uh, was up to me to, to make happen. We commuted every day by automobile. Uh, my friends Kevin and, and Mike and I, we all drove on different days. Uh, for the first year we explored and, and uh, we did okay. We didn't do exceptional, but we did okay. 
Uh, our days were filled with uh, as much goofing around as, as there was study. We had a tremendous amount of freedom and uh, we didn't use our time well. We were not as responsible as we should have been. It was an interesting time. Did not have a girlfriend in high school or college. I did date uh, in high school very, very modestly a young woman named Louise Senatempo, a cheerleader. We were very, very uh, fond of one another because we had very similar interests. We'll talk about that at a future date. Because I didn't study well, and because we were at that time fighting a war in uh, Vietnam, there was a draft, and unfortunately I was drafted in 1972 and ultimately became uh, part of the United States military serving in the United States Navy. I enlisted in October of 1972 and went to San Diego, California. I spent three years in the Navy. It was a three-year enlistment, and during that time I served aboard the USS Samuel Gompers AD-37, a destroyer tender. I had one uh, Western Pacific cruise known as Westpac 74, where we visited Hawaii, the Philippines, Taiwan, and Hong Kong. I was never involved in any combat in any manner. As a matter of fact, I learned how to type when I was in high school. I was a good sailor. I was a yeoman. I had learned how to type when I was in high school, and I typed quite well. If you know how to type or use a keyboard, generally speaking, you'll never have to fight in a war. I spent my days in an air-conditioned office aboard ship preparing military justice proceedings, captain's masts and courts martial, and that's the correct pronunciation of the plural, courts martial. I wasn't happy being in the military. It's not where I wanted to be, but I made the best of it. I did quite well. I was asked to stay in, which I did not, and in 1975 I received an honorable discharge and returned to the Midwest, going to the University of Missouri, Columbia, in hopes of going to their prestigious School of Journalism. In 1976, I attended the School of Journalism, and I did quite well. But there's more, much more and I hope to share that with you in the next episode.